thank you anjali ma'am uh, very nice to see you on board uh, you know btag platform thank you well, sir well i would like to request mr arun mohan to yeah thank you done sir done mr arun mohan to uh, record the session i am also done, recording sir. but uh, yeah please it's happening sir all right thank you um, because my bandwidth it is showing it is very poor uh thank you uh, malika ma'am happy to see you again maybe this is the third one you are you know doing for uh, the btech mem- members all the uh, educators i think uh, today we have uh, the english community joined uh, on pl- on the zoom you know platform uh, to listen to uh, malika ma'am she has a very herculean task today i must understand uh, she has to go through the entire curriculum of grade i mean 9 to 12 secondary senior secondary but she will uh, do her best uh, our focus will be on the question paper discussion uh, i hope i am audible to you i am sir Yes, sir. But there was a little glitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So without uh, you know any delay, I welcome all the participants and uh, let us uh, you know start the session. Over to uh, Anjali. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, enlightening words, ladies and gentlemen. It's now time to turn our attention to the main attraction of today's webinar. Joining us today is the highly skilled and talented. Madam Malika Sen with a strong educational background she brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to her role as a senior english educator at delhi public school durgapur in addition she has received specialized training from trinity college london in integrated skills in english further enhancing her skills in language instruction over the course of a 15 year career as an educator she has held various significant positions in esteemed cbse schools and colleges throughout the country her involvement in the education field extends beyond the classroom she has taken on responsibilities as a cbse observer assistant head examiner evaluator for classes 10 and 12 nas observer personality development and communication trainer her dedication and exceptional contributions to the field of education have been recognized and celebrated she has been honored with many prestigious awards like the extra mile educator award from bharat sahodia and the guru award for her extraordinary contributions to education in maharashtra with her extensive experience diverse skill set and passion for teaching she is committed to making a positive impact on the lives of students and educators alike ma'am on behalf of everyone present i welcome you and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening thank you thank you so much anjali ma'am such a nice and lovely introduction thank you so much uh, good evening everyone and again a lovely evening warm evening thank you so much salam sir for giving me the opportunity once again to be with the btag team and with all the educators um today is again a special day uh, definitely for me as well as for the world as you all know we are celebrating the international yoga day and along with that we are also celebrating the world music day right and uh, you know it brings into my mind one of the beautiful thought of rabindranath tagore um who says that you know music fills the infinite between two souls but here so many souls are sitting together i hope i will be able to fill the infinite questions or uh, you know queries whatever will come to me and we will work together yes swami vivekananda again says all this bringing up of the mind into a higher state of vibration is included in one world and that is yoga so we all believe definitely believe that a healthy mind stays in a healthy body and to get that let's start working from today onwards another very important day is there today um i can see 247 participants can you tell me apart from these two days what is the special day today geographically 
I can give a clue. Today is 21st of June. Longest day, yes. Shubhra ma'am is telling. Solstice, Jolly ma'am is telling. Summer solstice, yes, yes. Longest day. Yeah. So 21st, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for your responses. Hottest day, yeah. yes, it is. Longest day and the hottest day, yeah. So today is the summer solstice day and this longest and the hottest day of 2023. Let's begin the session. Let's gear up and tighten our seat belts for 2024 board exams, right? Okay, before we, uh, you know, prepare ourselves with the curriculum, with the question paper pattern, we need to have a, some kind of, you know, background work or we can say preparation, thorough preparation with the curriculum, with the question paper pattern, with the syllabus, how to teach, what to teach, and what are the learning outcomes that we want from the classes. So that's very, very important uh, for our preparation. Before I start the presentation uh, in the chat box, Anjali ma'am, I give a question to all that as because it's seven o'clock, 7 p.m. evening, um, what are the ingredients that we need to prepare a cup of coffee? Ingredients needed to prepare a cup of coffee. In the meanwhile, ma'am, can I start sharing the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Please do let me know if it is visible. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yes. Thank you. Ma'am, we can see the ans answers also in the chat box. Okay. Water, so milk, ingredients coffee powder. Required. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Water, water, milk, coffee powder. Some people have written coffee, sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The common ingredients are milk, sugar, coffee. Little yes. water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I think, Anjana ma'am, someone wrote pan also. Very intelligent <laughs> answer. Without yeah. the pan, we cannot make the coffee. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So, anybody is writing spoon also? Anybody is writing spoon as well? To stir the coffee with the milk and the hot water? Uh, someone has written fire, ma'am. Fire, yes. Yes. Very intelligent answer. Very intelligent answer. Yeah. So we need coffee, we need sugar, we need milk. If you love black coffee, then milk can be, uh, you know, opted out. Then we need water, spoon, pan. And, Ma you know, one more answer is there. That is a tight jar where we, I can keep the coffee safe for my next sip, right? So that's also important. And to make a cup of coffee, we need a proper measurement as well, right? And without that measurement, a cup of coffee can also get become a flaw. Similar to that, relating to that cup of coffee, our classrooms are like that, you know, when we enter the classrooms, we need to have all the ingredients ready with us, right? We should have a list of all, this, uh, all the chapters, the poetries, the proses, the writing skill topics, the reading skill, how we are going to teach. As I said, this time the CBSC is uh, focusing on the competency-based uh, questions. You must be knowing all the educators out there and the weightage has been increased, right? So we have to work a lot uh, for our learners and their and their best results. So with this thought that success is when preparation meets the opportunity. So when our preparation meets the opportunity, success will definitely come next year. With this thought, let's begin with the senior secondary classes, class 11 and 12, English core subject 301. Now let's understand the syllabus, the competencies, what is required in the question, how to write it. Then we will move with the question paper pattern the weightage for each and every competences and the questions and the number of periods required to complete it. Dear educators, you can see on the screen, the competences which we are supposed to focus on this year is to listen and comprehend live as well as the recorded oral presentations on a variety of topics. This is the first thing. We all know that there are four skills of English language, right? LSRW. Focusing on that, the first skill CBSC focuses is on listening and comprehending. Second is to develop the confidence of the learners or to increase their proficiency. The language skills along with that, the social and academic participation in various 
group discussions as well as interviews in the classroom environment is very, very important because competencies cannot be achieved, I feel, only by reading the textbook or doing the question answers or giving a summary. The more we discuss the theme, the more we look into the uh, aspect of that particular chapter, the message, then only the children can solve the competency-based questions. Third, that CBSC focuses is the, to perceive the overall meaning and the organization of the ideas. Many times what happens, you know, students, they know the chapter, okay, and they know what I'm supposed to write. But when it comes to organizational skills, because that is one of the very important rubrics in the answers, where they lag behind and they keep on writing haphazard answers. So this is also very, very important point where they should perceive the overall meaning of the chapter as well as organize it accordingly as per the question. Next point comes to identify the central or the main point of the chapter. Apart from the characters, what is the central or the main point? If you have seen the sample question paper, we will move ahead with that also. You will see there are various questions which are connected or linked with different chapters as well. It is not asking a question based on one lesson. Rather, we have in one of the question, there are four chapters related, right? So to understand or to link or to compare or to contrast between these themes, the child must be knowing that what is overall meaning of that lesson and what is the central idea of that particular chapter. The next competency we focus on is to promote advanced learning language skills, right? Now, we, first of all, reasoning, drawing inferences through various activities, developing your skills through analyzing the, the paragraph or maybe the reading paragraphs, or in case of writing skills also, they need to focus on the organizational and reasoning skills. Now, text-based writing, when you talk about text-based writing based on prescribed texts or unseen texts, prescribed text means which section we I'm talking about? Yes. Can somebody tell that prescribed text means which section of the question paper we are talking about? And unseen text means which section? There are how many sections in the English question paper? Very easy question. How many sections are there in the question paper of class 11 and 12? English core. Ma'am, some have written four, some have written three. Okay. Any more answers? For English uh, core, how many sections are there? There are three sections, right? So there are three sections. Reading skills, then we have... Um, uh, grammar and creative writing skills. For 11, we have grammar and creative writing skill. And for 12, we don't have any grammar topics as such in the question paper. And then we have the literature section. All right. So prescribed text means obviously the literature section and unseen text means when it is um, in the reading section. So text-based writing should be again practiced a lot in the classroom environment. They should get uh, an idea or develop uh, um, an analytical skill to write articles or reports or any kind of formal letters, especially job applications. Most of the time students, they face a difficulty in job applications and they feel like I have to write so much into it, right? I have to write the cover letter. I have to write the uh, resume along with that. And sometimes children get confused what to write first and how to write it. So this, these type of uh, develop, skills should be developed in the classroom environment in a very rigorous way. Make use of the contextual clues in the lessons to infer to the meanings as well as the reading skills that are given in the question paper. So lots of practice. These are some of the basic competencies and most important competencies which we need to work in the upcoming five months. Actually, we have only five months remaining. Most of the time, December month, the pre-board starts. Right. So, And the next point is produce unified paragraphs with adequate details to support your answer. When you are writing any, any answer in literature, if you're writing it in a paragraph form, then you need to support that paragraph with details from that lesson. Not that you're copying exactly and writing the whole story in the long question answers, right? How you are relating the theme with the uh, topic that is given in the chapter along with real life experiences. That is what should be again taught in, in unified paragraphs. Next two points, it's easy. You, we all know that grammatical structure should be accurate. It should be appropriate. Writing items should be related to workplace. This is for writing skill when we are doing CV or we are writing reports, etc. 
right? So these are the basic competences which CPSC wants us to focus in 11th and 12th standard classrooms. Now, these are some of the methods and techniques that we are, we are supposed to use in the classroom environment. Lots of role play, dramatization, GDs, writing practice, or sometimes silent reading also do help us. You know, in a classroom, most of the time we feel like silent reading is not so fruitful. We ask the children to do loud reading, loud reading. In a classroom environment, you give them 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and one particular passage only to, to understand, comprehend, analyze, infer, and then write the answers. So some silent activity is also sometimes required. It is not that we will keep on talking and the children will also just follow our classroom. Like it should not be only lecture method. All right. So this is very important. Silent reading. Please do it in the reading skill activity. Out of six periods that we get, at least I feel one session should be given in a week for doing the reading activity or the reading skills. So one one worksheet should be given. Usually children do not practice this by, you know, at home. So in a classroom environment, in the form of worksheets, my, this is my suggestion that please give them some worksheets and make them practice in the classroom environment as well. It is important to train the students independently and intelligently to interact actively with the texts. Independently means they should understand it by themselves, not that we are always telling them this is the key points or these are the value points. This is what you should think. Let the learners speak. Let the learners express. Let them also look into the chapter in a different way. 11th and 12th standard, we have beautiful lessons in CBSC, okay, with lots of messages related to our social environment, related to emotional environment, talking about relationships. So we need to give them also a chance to think independently. You know, in the classroom environment, when they think independently, then only they can write the answers in the exam hall because we don't know what questions will come. Maybe we are guiding and training them. But in the exam hall, when they are writing, it is all their own creativity and critical thinking. It is not that what they had heard and, you know, mugged up from somewhere. They are not doing it. So let us begin it in the classroom only. One, one question we should give every week based on these competences. And yes, feedback is again very important. It shouldn't be like we give the question and then, you know, uh, the child is writing or not writing. Let's keep a track on that also. Right. So one competency questions. Uh, should be given per week. It's my suggestion again. And let's give feedback also to them, right? Some pre-reading activity generally uh, is required. Pre-reading activity, mostly we can relate it with a pro, uh, with a poet, with a writer. It can be another story based on that same theme which you are going to uh, teach them in the classroom. So it can be a short story, you know, in um, LinkedIn or in most of the time in all the uh, Facebook. We I get, I pick up short stories. I, whatever I get, whatever resources, sometimes I pick up short stories, which I feel it is related to maybe Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, the poem. And I start with that activity. I ask a child to read and then I come to the main theme of that particular poems. To linking between two uh, lessons with this lesson and the pre-reading activity helps the child to remember the theme for a longer period of time. He will never forget it. Okay, so this is very important again. Methods and techniques suggested by CBSC. Next one is encouraging the students to interpret the text in different way. This one I just now told, like they can interpret the story, the poems, the dramas in also in a different way. So we should encourage the students in the classroom environment. And yes, they should be asked to interact actively, right? A whole class. I'm talking about the whole class, not the 10 of them. Most of the time, the 10 of them, you know, they're very eager to answer. And we are also very eager to know what they are telling because they are the intelligent ones. And 10 of them might be always quiet throughout the year, right? And we have to work on these 10 of them who are quiet in the classrooms. So we have to bring them, ask them constantly, uh, you know, motivate them to speak, maybe right or wrong. Otherwise, they will not be able to write the answers as per the CBSC sample question paper this year. You must have seen it and you must have seen the level of... Um, Difficulty is quite high this time as per the question paper. It is not like the last two years where we had lots of MCQs. It was also difficult, but I felt students were, you know, pretty easier for that particular question paper pattern. But here they have to think a lot and write. Okay. So constantly suggested methods and techniques. You can see oral activity, interact. These words are mentioned in the CBSC curriculum. So we need to focus on all these points. Now, let's move on the specific competencies which are required 
in reading skill, in grammar and writing skill, and in literature for class 11. For class 11, the weightage in the reading skill is 26 marks, grammar and writing skills 23, and literature we have 31 marks. All right. For class 11 in the reading uh, skills, we have these competencies mentioned there on the screen. Conceptual understanding. First, when a, when a, whenever a comprehension passage is given, the child should be you know, taught how to read, skimming, scanning, all this process, they should know. And along with that, they should be able to find out what is the concept behind that particular passage. There are different types of passages, narrative, literary, factual. Uh, you, we, we have to practice different, different types of passages in the classroom, as I said. And uh, along with that, child should be able to decode, analyze, and infer. Can anyone tell me, what do you understand by decoding? What do you mean by decoding? When I decode a, pa a passage, what do you mean by that? Yes, Anjali, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we can get the answers. It is deducing, interpret, making it simpler, analyze, underlining meaning, understand the meaning between lines, recalling, find mm -hmm. hidden meaning, comprehend, yeah. decipher, unjumble, breaking into small, yes, uh, simple decipher, points. Decipher. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All answers. Deciphering. Correct answer. You know, to conceptual understanding and decoding means to convert it into an intelligible language, your own intelligible language, or to decipher the meaning of the passage. Then we start analyzing. What do you mean by analyzing? Means we examine it methodically, okay, and in detail, in detail. What is, the, what is it that the passage is talking about? Then we start interpreting it. What is meant by inferring? Inferring means concluding or deducing. Someone has already given the answer. Right, from the evidences which are given in the passage. That is the meaning of inferring, interpreting and appreciating the literary and the vocabulary part of the uh, passage. Okay, vocabulary based question one question definitely they will give. I hope so. It is there in the sample question paper as well. And summarizing, summarizing easy using appropriate formats. So in the reading skill, we need to check all these competencies and train our students accordingly. Talking about grammar and writing skills, grammar, whatever topics are there, we have to revise a lot in the classroom with the exercises. Here also, similarly, conceptual understanding is there, but here application of rules, whatever topics are there, rules they cannot remember, but how to apply it in the exercises, that should be taught. Analyzing, reasoning, appropriate style, tone in case of writing skill, appropriate format, whether they are writing it in, in a proper, fluent manner and organizational skills is important. Again, that is a part of the rubric. And yes, evaluation and creativity. Creativity is the most important part depending on the topic, what they are writing and the level of writing, whether it is of a senior secondary level child or not. It should not be like 11 and 12 standard child writing like a eighth or seventh standard child. So that creativity level should be high. And accordingly, we can evaluate the writing skill topics. Coming to literature, recalling and reason reasoning. Recalling, obviously I have to relate the question with the chapter that has been taught, taught in the class and reasoning based on the question, how I'm going to write the answer, my opinion, uh, my perception into that story, appreciating all the literary conventions used in this that particular chapter. How will I appreciate the literary conventions? How will I appreciate the literary conventions? Yes, dear participants, can you please answer, how can I appreciate the literary conventions used in a prose or a poetry? How can I do that? Maliga, ma'am, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, the Zoom may be cut off at 8.30, so pace up your, your you know, presentation accordingly. Okay. Manage your you know, speed accordingly. Yeah, okay, sir. So literary conventions means appreciating literary conventions means how much, how much you have understood the text, how much you can critically think, how much you can judge the character, how much you have understood the theme, the style, and the figurative language, non-figurative language used in that particular chapter. Inference and analysis, we had already talked about the conclusion and how you analyze. Creativity with fluency will be required in your long question answer. Critical thinking and recalling also will be required in your long question answer.
coming to the question paper pattern. So as you can see on the screen, this is a grade 11 English core. One unseen passage will be given of 10 marks. One unseen case-based passage will be given of eight marks. Note making and summarizing of eight marks. Total weightage 26. We have grammar and creative writing skills together. Gap filling, reordering, classified advertisement, poster, speech, and debate. So uh, advertisement and poster, these are short writing tasks of 50 words. And speech and debate, two long writing tasks. Any one they have to attempt out of two. Section C, literature, where you will be getting extract-based questions from Hornbill, poetry as well as proses, and one extract-based questions from Snapshot. Short question answers of 40 to 50 words uh, from both the books we will get, and then long question answer of 120 to 150 words. The weightage, as you see on the screen, is given, and the rest 20 marks, all of you know about it, that five for listening skill, five for speaking skill, and project work, based on that project work, we have to take a viva of five marks, that will be of 10 marks. And these are the chapters, which you say on the screen. Portrait of a lady, we are not afraid to die, discovering Tut, the adventures, adventure, Silk Road. These are the poetries and these are the proses from Snapshot. This is the overall syllabus for English core class 11. Let's move to the next slide. Class 12 competencies, little bit of differences there. It is almost similar like class 11. The difference is lying in the creative writing skill where we need to check that how much they are inferring, analyzing and writing with appropriate format and fluency in case of writing skill because a lot of weightage is there. They have to write four writing skill of 18 marks. Okay. And apart from that in literature, 40 marks, the weightage is a little bit different, 22, 18 and 40. In literature, 40 marks means a lot of competency-based questions will be given. MCQs are less in number this time. Same competencies, creativity, critical thinking, how they are inferring, how they are analyzing, how much they understood the chapter, the message, and whether they are able to compare and contrast between two lessons or not. There are four, four to five chapters or lessons in class 12 based on you know, the role of women or uh, you know the dignity of women or the position of women. Can the participants write the names of the chapters in the chat box? Like which lessons are talking about the same theme, almost same theme from the 12th standard syllabus. Syllabus is on the screen. How can we relate the theme, compare and contrast between proses and poetries in class 12? Aunt Jenny, Memories of Childhood. Okay. Going places. My mother yes, at 66. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Tigers. Okay. My mother at 66. Yes. On Jennifer's Tigers. My mother at 66. In enemy, can we relate the theme to enemy as well? Because there also we have the character, special character, lady character. What is her name? She, we can relate a bit with that lesson as well. And uh, talking about the rest of the lessons, like uh, last spring, uh, you know, the last lesson, there are so many uh, comparing and contrast questions which we can frame from last lesson as well as last spring. Because in both the lessons, if you see, the last lesson is talking about, obviously, the value of language and how the teacher is feeling. And in the last spring, the writer, uh, you know, she is uh, focusing on the children's lives, how they are le leading their lives in the uh, in, in Firozabad or in the slum area, right? So here also we can frame questions and contrast between these two chapters. Deep water, overcoming the fear, right? Rat trap. Also, to some extent, we can frame questions. Right, right. So when we are framing the questions, question paper, internal question paper, half yearly, we have to, or, or any pre-board question paper, we have to follow this format as CBSC has given and try to create questions based on the competencies, not direct questions. Please do not give direct questions, which will not help them. Place the competencies in front of you, place the chapters, the theme and the message, then frame the questions where they can think a lot Critically thinking and creativity should be there in the answer. Direct questions 
request not to give okay in the question paper let them practice not that finally in 2024 they are sitting with the question paper and they are not understanding our dear learners right so this is a class 12 english core uh, paper pattern where you can see 22 marks weightage is given for both the passages now this time two marks increased okay 12 plus 10 22 you can see creative writing skill four topics are there which are the same as it was there last year and in literature the pattern is almost same internal assessment remains the same there are no changes as such the chapters are there on the uh, screen rubrics for assessment of speaking for assessment of speaking, we are, uh, we have to use these rubrics, how they are pronouncing. This I have kept in the slide because many of my colleagues uh, from different schools, they keep asking about the rubrics as well, how to assess the speaking or the listening or the project work. So I felt that I, I let me keep it in the presentation. All right, so pronunciation, vocabulary, accuracy, communication, interaction, and how much the child is fluent in, in, in the listening skill or the speaking skill activities. Project portfolio, this is already given in the CBSE website. I've just kept it for your reference. Uh, in short, you can pick up all these points. Okay, the child should be guided accordingly. With your guidance, they will start the project work. Cover page should be there. Proper title, proper details of the child. Statement of the purpose, objectives, goals, certification of certificate of completion. What are the material evidences of learning progress? Whether they had done it by themselves or whether they had done it in a different way, we need to check that. Okay, it should not be last minute, tomorrow is the submission and they are doing it in a different way. Then the objective is not achieved actually, the outcome. All right, so please tell them that you show me how you are progressing from where you are collecting the materials, whether you have understood because see project portfolios are also somewhere. I feel personally, it will help them to write the question answers of the competency-based questions. Okay, word limit 800 to 100, uh, eight, sorry, 800 to 1000 words in essay, in script or report form. form. Reflections, what the student as an individual or if it is a group activity you have taken, what is it that they had reflected from that particular project work? Photographs, definitely they will give. And yes, list of all the... Let's move on to the next one. How to assess the project portfolios. Now for English teachers, it's a very huge task. And usually we have so many project files where we will sit at the end of the year, do the assessment, give the marks and enter the internal assessment. Uh, so... We need to check the quality of the content of the project. We need to check whether the child is giving it on time, as I said just now. We need to check the con content in terms of spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Thoughts and ideas are clear or not. How much, if it is a group activity, whether all the group members had participated in that or not. And what are the knowledge and experiences that they had gained through the project, right? Because we have to give the internal assessment marks as a uh, educator for class 12th. <clears throat> Now let's move on to the main part of the presentation. That is the sample question paper for English class two. Now in sample question paper, as you see here, three hours, 80 marks, fine. There's a passage given here of 22 marks. And I'll move to the next passage. And let's focus on the questions. That's very, very important. In the, in the first question, we will see the questions, like how what type of questions has been given by CBSE in the sample question paper, along with the answers as well. So the first question asks, select the option that classifies Arthur's confusion about the drastic events, such as the destruction of his home planet and the introduction of new technologies correctly. If we pick up this question here, and there are four options given, so it is not easy for the child, you know, to answer this type of questions. The question is asking, select the option that classifies Arthur's confusion about drastic events, such as the destruction of his home planet and introduction of new technologies. Four options are given, routine and boredom and all these points are given. But when I was also reading the uh, passage, it was, it was, it is really difficult for a, for a child to analyze and infer. So as I talked about that lots of the practices required, the correct answer for this, as it is given here, that is loss and change, right? But somewhere we also feel that maybe it is adventure and excitement. So maybe how to do the MCQ-based questions or choice-based questions, teach them the method of elimination. That is very, very important. Again, out of four, any two will not be definitely incorrect, okay? And then two of them will be where the child has to understand, analyze, and pick up the answer. So elimination process is one. 
another one that we will see another question which is coming up in the next part of the question paper how to do it so here loss and <clears throat> the most appropriate answer is loss and change second question if we go into that what is the significance of white lab mouse in the control room of the heart of gold spaceship now here you know the poetic devices are also somewhere used because here personification is also there in in that particular um, paragraph and the correct answer as per the uh, I'm marking same. It is a it is a ship's computer, right? It, it serves as a ship's computer. So maybe it is an artificial, like it is talking about the robot and all, all all the world of robotics and artificial intelligence and all. But somewhere we are also relating it with emotions. Means we are personifying it. All right. So the child must be knowing all the poetic devices as well. Look, third question, if you see here, share evidences. Uh, you know, from the text in about 40 words to support the view that the writer's writing style is descriptive and humorous. How the child will understand whether the passage given is descriptive or whether it is humorous. The question asked over here is, you have to pick out the sentences from the, from the passage, which is showing that it is descriptive or a line which is showing it is humorous. So lots of analyzing, deducing, Inferring is is definitely required from the child's end, right, to write this answer. Fourth question, if we go into the fourth question, as it is given there, complete the sentence appropriately with characteristic. This is an easy question, I felt. They can easily write this answer. It is directly given in the passage. Fifth one is also easy. Let's move on to the next question. Sixth one, very interesting. Explain in about 40 words, and you see the weightage also. It is two marks, okay. Explain in about 40 words why the name, the paranoid android, is considered ironic. Very difficult question again for a child to write. She, he or she has to go through the passage properly and answers, understand the question what is it asking. Why is it ironic? First, the child should understand what is the meaning of ironic statements. Right? The child must be aware about it, that this is what is ironic. Many children will not be aware what is, what is an ironic statement. Although we are doing it every now and then in the classrooms. But they, must, they will not be aware. So they should know what is what is an ironic statement and why this question is asked. Why the name paranoid android is given. So it is expected that the, that the robot which has been used here are having human-like emo emotions uh, such as paranoia. We call that paranoia. Or robots are often thought as logical and unemotional. But here the paranoid is referring to the irrational fear and anxiety. That means somewhere ironical statement. Why? Because stereotype whatever we think is not going as per this particular passage the the robot has been given human qualities which is really a paranoid state with emotions robots do not have emotions right so but then this is what the child is expected to write in his own words clues are there in the passage itself right the next question in the um, line a body that looked like it had been cobbled together from spare parts in the marking scheme, you can refer to it. I'll give the link also. Now, this statement, what is meant by cobbling? Cobbled. Nowadays, cobblers are not, we hardly see them, right? Earlier, they, we used to see in our childhood. The child must understand what is the meaning of cobbled. Means joining it in pieces, right? Joining the pieces together. So that is what is meant by cobbled. And here, scraps of leather and the stitches that is used together to create a shoe. In the same way, here, you know, the Marvin, the character which has been given there, has been put together or cobbled using the spare parts. Very easy answer. But to understand the question, the child might be facing difficulty. So such type of questions, you know, uh, dear participants, we have to frame and make them practice in the classroom environment. Again, all right. The ninth question, if we move to the ninth question, there are five headlines given below. And the question, uh, five headlines are given. And the question is, like, identify the option that displays the headline or headlines that does or do not correspond with the occurrence in the passage. So here, very interesting question again. Five headlines are given. But what the child is expected to find out, the, he the, the headlines which are not corresponding with the occurrences means it is not going with that passage. Okay, it is not the that which is there. And along with that, the options given as only A, B, C, or D. I'll move to the next. B, C, or D, only E, or A and E. Now here, two, two things the child is doing in the, in the question paper. First, they need to read all the headlines properly. Then they need to identify out of these five, which are not going with the passage, not referring to the passage. 
the correct answer here is definitely given in the marketing scheme. It is already given that the, 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 these, these options are not going B, C, and E. Option B, it is not going. And A and E is definitely matching with the passage. So B, C, and D is not going. This is, again, a very important competency-based question. Most of the questions are all competency-based questions. Very important uh, part, which we have to remember this time, that there are no extra questions given. If 12 marks, the weightage is, is 12 marks, 12 mark, there are no extra questions. So we cannot take any chance that the child is losing one or two marks and the overall percentage comes down, right? So there are no choice-based questions. Internal choices are not there. We have to, again, a lot of hard work required from our end, you know, to make them give their best. Second passage is again, uh, you can see here uh, the passage uh, as it is given, it is of 290 words. We will read the, you can read the passage later, but this is again a factual passage with lots of percentages. And it is talking about the various types of travelers or tourists, like who is a solo traveler, who, what is the difference between solo travelers and group travelers? What is their objective on visiting a different, different places? So that is what this passage is talking about. Basically, it is a survey. Okay, It is a survey between both group and solo travelers. Now here, if you look into the first question, infer two possible ways. Inferring is one of the competency. So one question is already there. First question, ways that the survey mentioned in paragraph one could be beneficial. So whatever the survey has been made here, is it beneficial or not? That's, a, that's the answer the child has to write. And in this, there are lots of answers which are there already in the passage which they can easily find out and write. Okay, the second question, is again a, an MCQ. MCQ weightage is less this time, only 20%. So um, one MCQ, again, here you can see here as it is given, like what travel choice. This one is easy, not so difficult. Let's pick up another question. Fourth question, very interesting, the fourth question. Identify the solo traveler from the following three travelers. Now there are three travelers given. Reshma, who wants to keep hunting, for, who keeps on hunting for rickshaws and taxis. Okay, and uh, books, uh, pre-booked vehicle and Nawaz who is happy sharing a room in the hostel, do not need any hotel accommodation and Deepak who is not worried about his well-being while exploring different, different remote areas. So there are three travelers given. Now the question here is identify the solo traveler. To understand this question, the child must be very much, uh, you know, uh, clear and comprehend properly who is a solo traveler, what are their qualities, and who is a group, who are the group travelers, what are their qualities. And here the correct answer is Nawaz. The reason behind that is the reason is also given, the keywords are given because you know, solo traveler, they are budget friendly, and we have the, the keywords given there that they are budget friendly in the passage itself. Group traveler, usually organized transport, they love, uh, you know, and uh, yes, they focus on safety and security. So both the characters here, Reshma and Deepak, if you see their statements, they go for organized traveling, focus on safety and security. Only Nawaz is telling that I can adjust with any kind of rooms. Okay, I'm not, uh, I do not have any problem if I share the room. So he is a solo traveler because he wants to save the money. So lots of, you know, referring to the passage, analyzing and then writing the answers. The, it will take a lot of time. Okay, it will definitely take a lot of time. Uh, the next question, uh, let's move to the next question. Yes, the last question, if we see the last question, question number eight, that is talking that stay true or false. Now here the title is given, Wanderlust, the solo travel trend among young adults in India is appropriate for this passage or not. So th again, the, this is talking about the solo travel trend. Is it is it appropriate among young adults in India? Is this passage talking about this particular theme or is it about different? The answer is definitely uh, false because it is not talking about that. It is actually a survey between group travelers and it, between the solo traveler. It is not focusing which one is the best one. So the answer will be false over here. So this type of these type of questions are required, which is considered to be competency-based questions. Weightage, you can see, between one or two marks. Okay, so we need to practice similar to the sample question paper. In creative writing skills, uh, here also, you know, the questions are a little bit different. Uh, first question, if you see, Bali High Public School has recently created Cure Green, a dedicated area for local medicinal herbs and shrubs adjacent to the flower garden on campus. As Rashil Tiwari, captain of the Eco Club, draft a notice for the school notice board 
informing students of classes 11 and 12 about a guided walk through Cure Green post assembly on Friday, 10th July, and invite them, invite the caregiver applications for Cure Green. If you see all the writing skills questions here are not easy, easily understood. Not that directly, okay, draft a notice within this, these words, and this is what in the school notice board it has to be given, or some inter-school competitions are there. Not like that. Lots of comprehension skills are again required over here. Along with that, reasoning also. All right, so need, the child need to understand what is it that I have to write, for whom I have to write. Okay, what are the pointers? The form, format, definitely they all know we do it. And accordingly, the notice writing, the next question is also similar to that. The next one, the next question, question number four, I attempt any one out of two. This, these, are, these are compulsory questions. We have to do it. There is no option that we will leave, like article or report. Right. So here the child should be properly guided how to write a notice and how to uh, write the invitations Okay, in card format and letter format. Both are important. So here in the card format, the first one you can see share information about the camp and all. Here we are writing in card format. The next one is informal letter, but nowhere it is mentioned Okay, that whether it is card format or it is in the form of a letter in case of invitations as well as replies. The next one is actually a reply. It is a reply accepting this invitation on behalf of your grandmother, but it is in the informal letter format. So letter format and card format, both we have to practice thoroughly. And as I said, there is no internal choices. We have to do these topics properly. Mo moving on to question number five, where we see Srimati Leelavati Khatri, our grandmother has received an invitation from her childhood friend residing at a distance in the same city. They invite us for the blessing ceremony and, uh, okay, this one we have done, sorry. Question number five, that is about the advertisement. Write a letter along with your bio data. Now here the advertisement is already given in the question paper. What they want, assistant directors are wanted and the resume, the last date, everything is mentioned there. The child has to be, uh, you know, very smart enough to pick up the points from the question itself and frame it, frame it in the form of a cover letter or in the form of the resume or the bio data that he or she is writing. The next one is again same, but here also again clues are given. We we have to frame questions like this, like the next question, sixth one, sixth A says, you are Sohail Hussain, Hassan of class 12B, write an article for your school magazine sharing the importance of young adults as volunteers in one's local community, the need to do so. And here also we see there are the cues given that why uh, you know, we are going to write this particular article. So, but between article and report, there is a choice. So the child uh, should be confident enough about the format, about the content, what to write, how to write, and how to properly organize it. Accuracy, organizational skills, very, very important. In the literature section, uh, first, again, competency-based questions are there. Literature section, if you see a reference to the context, uh, let's move on to this question. One question, let's pick, pick up. Which of the following best, that theme is perfectly fine. Now this one, question number five. Based on the poem, rhyme scheme, evident in lines two to five of the given extract, which word with rhyme with line one? So here they need to find out. Directly it is not given. Indirectly they need to find out. Three words are given. Say, think and tunes. Now if, I, if, if we see in this way, the answer, uh, the question asked over here is, so based on the poem rhyme scheme, evident in lines two to five of the given extract, which word with, would rhyme with line one? Okay, so line one, we need to see what is the last word in line one. That is dooms. And what are the options given? Said, think and tombs. So in this way, they have to find out and write the answer. Obviously, answer is tombs. So directly, it is not given what is the rhyme scheme of this particular passage. That is a direct question, only knowledge-based. So we are not focusing on knowledge base, only on competencies. Indirectly, they have to think critically and then write the answers. Another uh, question, let's pick up, move to the next slide. And let's take this question. This question, very important and very interesting. Question number four, state whether the given statement is true or false. Now what is asked here, the poetic device used in the line, pale as a winter's moon is the same as the one used in the line, the winter wind wistfully wailed at night. Now, can, can the participants tell me how many poetic devices are referred to here? Is it only one poetic device or more than that? In question number four, 
which has been taken from the poem My Mother at 66. How many three, poetic devices are referred to? Three, yes, two, three, two are, these are the replies I mean, okay. ma'am. Mm -hmm. Alliteration, names, names. alliteration, simile, metaphor. Yes. Yeah. Personification. Okay. Now let's move. Okay. Correct answers. Personification. Let's look into it. Personification is there or not? We'll just look into it once. Okay. So here the question is asked. What is the question asked? That uh, state whether the given statement is true or false. Poetic device used in the line as a pale as a winter's moon. Okay. Pale, late winter's moon. Pale. Right. Pale as a late winter's moon. Is it the same as it is used in winter wind is fully veiled at night? The child must be knowing that what is the poetic device used in the second line. Then only he can say whether it is true or false. Otherwise, he can't, right? He or she can't. So in the second line, what is the poetic device? Alliteration, right? That's for sure. W sound is repeated. But then the, here, is it the same as it is in the first line? No, right? In the first line that is asked late winter's moon, that is definitely a simile or a metaphor to some extent, right? And it is not matching. So the answer will be false. So will the child get the answer very quickly, matching it? No. He will take a lot of time to analyze it and then write the answers. So this question, I thought to discuss it with uh, the participants. Let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> this question, question number three of 8B. Okay, question number three of 8B. 8B, question number three. Yes. Which trait are the astrologers lauding when they say warrior of warriors or hero of heroes or champion of champions? One mark question. But difficult to analyze and interpret and write the answer. 8B. Yes. Can anyone give the answer? Which trait are the astrologers referring to here or lauding when they say warrior of warriors, hero of heroes? Champion of champions. So what is it that they are referring to here? Various answers can come, but it should be correct. Yes. My answers that are coming up are uh, courage, bravery, valiance, mm -hmm. valor, and gallantry. Yes. Yeah. Leadership. Right? Leadership Someone, as well. Yes, ma'am. Correct yes, answers. Some, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, so much. Thank you so king. much. Someone has written a king. King. But the question is about trait, isn't it? Yes. It's yes. about trait, characteristic. What is the characteristic that the astrologers are telling through the statement? What is it that they are lauding? Right? So we have to write the answers which were given uh, previous participants. That one we have to write. Okay. So gallantry, bravery, heroism, leadership, definitely all these answers are correct. Let's move on to the next question. Ninth, um, there's a reference given from last lesson. And in this question, question number two, why does the protagonist feel anxious about entering the classroom on this particular day. Yes, ninth A. Question number two. One MCQ is given only. What is the answer? The classmates have started the lesson. The teacher is in a bad mood. The classroom is too quiet or the protagonist is running late. Option D is coming up. Okay. C also. There's an option C in the chat box. Mostly D. Okay. So we need to read the lesson, read this particular extract once again. Okay. That what is what is the extract talking about? It is saying, usually when school began, there was a great bustle, which could be heard out in the street, opening and closing of desks, lessons repeated in unison, very loud, with our hands over our ears to understand better, and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. But now it was also still. I had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen. But of course, that day, everything had to be as quiet as Sunday morning. Through the window, I saw my classmates. Clue is here in this line. Through the window, I saw my classmates already in their places. And Mansia Hamel 
walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm. In this line, the answer is there for this particular question. That why does the protagonist feel anxious about entering the classroom on this particular day? Because the classmates have already started the lesson. The answer is option A. Okay, the, anyone has given option A, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now I can see one. Uh, hmm. One person has okay. given this answer. Uh, Miss Dripti. Okay, so the answer is option A, right? So actually, if you see all the options, we feel like confused. We are confused which one is correct, right? But here is the clue that classmates have already started the lesson. So he was anxious to enter the classroom that particular day. Okay, moving to the next question, that is part B. Here, let us take this, let's pick up this particular question. Uh, number two. Okay, ninth B, number two. Yes, the line, it is not lack of money, but a tradition to stay barefoot can be best classified as, what is it talking about from the lesson last spring? Is it a fact? Is it an opinion, a theme or a plot point? To, for a child to understand, it will be difficult, right, Anjali ma'am? Because they should know what yes, is the fact. They should know what is an opinion. Yes, ma'am. They should understand the difference. They should know the difference. difference. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And how they will know? We have to do. We only have to do. We have to tell them this is theme, this is plot, this is fact, and this is opinion. Then only they can answer this question. For us, it might be easy, a bit easy. Yes. So, some what is the option? Some of the options that are coming up are B, D. Okay. It is not lack of money, but a tradition to stay barefoot. How can it be best classified? Is it a fact? Is it an opinion? Is it a theme or is it a plot point? And, you know, dear participants, to understand this question, it is not only about the quotation which is there in particular question. The child must be knowing the chapter. Otherwise, it is difficult. What is that chapter talking about? What type of theme is there? what type of writing or literary uh, form it is, then only they can write this answer. And who is the writer? Who is the writer? That's also important. Back, the background of the writer, although it is not asked in the questions, CBC is not asking about that. But yes, we do introduce, right, about the writer's life, the poet's life, uh, his achievements and about, about uh, their troubles or any problems they had faced. Why do we do that? So that we can, the children can relate to that le lesson with the writer's life as well somewhere. Right. So we need to understand who is the writer here. Last spring, uh, can someone tell me who is the writer? And what is the genre? Uh, one participant yes, has written, Ms. Soma Sen Gupta has written, Anis Jung. Yes. And genre? From there, we will get this answer, actually. Anyone written option B? Ma'am, anyone has given the answer as option B? Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss Shiny has written option B. All right. So the answer, and correct answer is option B. It is an Zemina, opinion. All right. It's yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Quite a few participants have written option B. Priya, Miss Priya. Yes. Zamina. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Uh, yeah, correct answer. So this is an opinion. It is not the lack of money, okay, but a tradition to stay barefoot. It is just the opinion of the writer over here. Okay, whatever she had observed in, uh, in the slum areas and whatever she has seen, the, student, the children doing, it is her opinion. It is her belief. It is her explanation. It is not a fact that, you know, they, because of lack of money, it's a tradition for them to stay barefoot. So that is what the explanation is all about. And uh, uh, the I, next question, ex yes, excuse me, ma'am. Um, yes, ma I would like to yes, interrupt for a moment. But most of the participants, yes, uh, they had written option B. Oh, I option B. Great, great. <laughs> yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's move on to question number 11, where we see short question answers. Question number 10 also, short question answers. Let's pick up one question from here. Okay. Uh, question number 10. Let's try to understand one question from here. That what type of competencies they are asking? Like question uh, three, question number 10, three. Is it visible on the screen, ma'am? Question number 10, three. How does the setting yes. of the yes, remote forest location 
in the rat trap contribute to the overall tone and mood of the story? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yes, ma'am. So uh, question number 10, three. What can be the answer for this? Or can someone give me only the value points? What is it that the child is expected to write in this? This is from the chapter, The Rat Trap. How does the setting of the for remote forest location in the story, The Rat Trap, contribute to the overall tone and the mood of the story? Such type of questions are important. Question number 11 also very a uh, good question is uh, one question, important question, like uh, question number two, on the face of it, importance of empathy, prejudice, and stereotype. So we need to train our children that we cannot mug up the lesson, all right? We need to know the plot. We need to know the theme. We need to know the value points. And with your opinion, you have to create your own answers. All the questions, as you see in the sample question paper, is not given directly. As I was talking about the... One of the questions which I was telling, this one, the B, 12th B, which I told just now, the different portrayals of women in the text, Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, Going Places, Lost Spring, My Mother at 66, often insights into the experiences of women in the society. And this is a beautiful answer that they can draft. But yes, it is difficult. We need lots of practice where they are relating to so many chapters on the same theme. All right. The marking scheme is, is there in the website. I'll share the link again at the last. And this is how we are, we are supposed to teach the students of grade 11 and 12 for competency-based questions. Let's move on to the next uh, slides. Okay. Methods and techniques of teaching, almost the same as we are doing for 11 and 12. But here we have to facilitate a more. We have to create the situation again so that they can express. We have to do lots of oral testing. We have to use the technology ICT activity based and learner centered uh, classrooms should be there. These, this is the weightage for nine standard reading. We have 20 writing skill, 20 and literature 40. These are the competencies which we are supposed to build up inside the learners. That is conceptual, same thing, understanding. It is less than 11 and 12 graders, okay? Not so difficult in the secondary level. Decoding, analyzing, inferring, interpreting, and vocabulary. We are already doing all these things in the classroom. Only thing is we have to work more on the literature section this time, okay? Because the questions are, as I said, will not be directly given. Identifying the central theme, very important. Understanding the writer's message. All these competencies are given in the CBSC website and in the curriculum. How they are applying the literary conventions how they are using the format and fluency to organize the uh, topics given in writing skills. Very, very important part for class nine. Okay, and uh, this is the question paper pattern for class nine, where we have 20 marks for section A, 20 for grammar and writing skills, uh, and section C, literature, 40 marks. So this is the British, and these are the topics, determiners, tenses, modals, subject, verb, agreement, or concord, and reported speech. We need to do all these uh, topics in grammar classes. And these are the chapters which are there in the literature section from Beehive and Moments. Okay. We all know about the syllabus. Just it's a recap of the weightage and the question, how much the question carries. What is the weightage? Okay. Internal assessment. Here it is important, which is not there in class 11 and 12. Periodic test, same as we were doing, multiple assessment, portfolio, and subject enrichment activities. Art integrated learning, AIL, very, very important again. And this time already CPSC had uh, released the circular, which state is, has, has been paired with another state. You must be knowing it. Please try to do activities based on AIL. Very, very important this year. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. Class 10, same paper pattern, 20, 20, 40. No changes as such in secondary level. The concept, the, com the this competencies also remain same. Only one most important thing here in class 10 literature section, you can see number four, identifying the central theme and the sub theme. Very, very important. And here, one more important using integrated structures, okay, with fluency in the last part of grammar section and writing skill. That is different, different between, difference between ninth and 10th grade. That's it. Moving to the question paper pattern. Very beautifully, it has been drafted by one of our uh, friends okay, from BTAG. Beautifully drafted here. You can see at one go, what is the weightage of the question um, and what type of questions will be given, the chapters, everything is mentioned there. Let's start working on that. I think most of the chapters we have already done. Okay. And weightage remains same, 2020, 
14. Without wasting much time, let's move on to the sample question paper of class 10. Same again, reading skills are there. Um, let's take one question here. Just let's let's look into the question. Which of the following statements, statements best describes the author's attitude towards studying the poetry? Now, in this particular uh, question, which is given in class 10, there's a woman called Drishti, who is a young woman who had always been fascinated by the supernatural. That is how the paragraph starts, carrying 12 marks. And here, the question is, we have to find out the author's attitude towards studying poetry. Here. Sorry, sorry. It was now, when we speak about this MCQs, as you see, you know, believes that emotional roller coaster of studying poetry is not worth the effect. Lots of difficult, difficult sentences has been given, but they need to underline the key words when they are doing the skimming and scanning of the passages. And here, the correct answer is it is actually talking about the, uh, you know, just a second. Yes. Yeah. So she recognizes the challenges of studying poetry. That is the correct answer. One more question. Let's pick up quickly from the sample question paper. This one, number eight. Number eight. State whether the following lines display an example of simple, complex, charged, or downright. What is the answer? Now, this type of questions usually we have not done. Okay, but we need to practice such questions in the classroom. That is it, is the line given here simple, complex, downright, weird? What is it that the poem talking about in this particular question? The sun rises in the east, a new day begins, a fresh start. The child must be knowing what is the difference between downright charged, simple, complex, this type of words. So a lot of analytical skills are required again. Okay, and in inferring to the passage given here. The answer is simple. It is written in a simple manner, but then we need to practice such type of questions. Complete the sentence properly. This is easy. Most of the children, they write it. When it comes for exploring or studying or inferring, that is where they did using, that is where they lag behind. And we have to work on those type of questions. Moving to the second one, it's again a passage based question. And here you can see question number six, where options are given, various pictures are there. And here they have to refer to the passage and write the answers accordingly. Question number six. Okay, let's move on to the next page. This question, uh, let's move this, take this question. Infer one benefit and one drawback of vertical gardening. This is based on gardening, this passage in class 10, with comparison to other solutions such as community gardens or parks. So you have to write one benefit and one drawback. Two point, two marks are there for both the answers. The weightage will be given for each and every point. Okay. Second one is what are the main takeaway from the study of this particular passage? So main takeaway, they need to understand the passage again, comprehend and find out the answer. Grammar, whatever topics are there, we have been doing it in the same way. Okay, error correction or fill in the blanks with the correct words. But yes, it is given in a different way with conversations and selecting the correct options like this question, if we see uh, this one. Fill in the blank by using the correct form of the word in the brackets is easy. Read the given sentence with the recipe review article. Identify the error. So you can see they have not given any direct error correction passages. Along with every question, there is a question which is uh, having a, a particular uh, case study, might be a situation, might be a conversation. Along with that, they have asked the question. It is not that directly error correction or fill in the blanks with appropriate words as we normally practice in the class. Okay, so we need to practice the grammar section in the same way as in the sample question paper they have given. All right, moving to next literature section. In the literature section, this question number two, state true or false, again, similar to uh, standard 12. If you see here, there are A, B, C, D, four options given. 
and none of the terms A to D, same type of questions can be applied to the question. None of the terms A to D can be applied to the question. You have to state whether this is true or false. And very important, there are four theories given. Hypothesis, assumption, premise, or is it a theory? We need to understand first what is a hypothesis, what is an assumption, what is a premise, and what is a theory. If the child is not understanding that, he, he or she cannot find out the answer. Question number two, state true or false in case of literature section. That is, has been taken from the making of a scientist chapter. Can anyone give this, this answer? The passage is given above, the reference. One participant has asked, what is premise? Can you elaborate? The meaning is given actually in the question itself. You know, a proposition that forms the basis of an argument. I propose a statement and that becomes a basis of that particular argument. Is it there in this passage? That is the question. Premise means before I start an argument, I give a proposition, right? An, a, a statement. Option C and option D. So what is it that is right? No, but that is not the question. Okay, dear participants, let's understand the question again. Okay, let's understand the question. The question is state true or false. The, the, these are the statements given. All right. The statements are given A, B, C, D. Hypothesis, assumption, premise, and theory. What is the meaning of these words? That is also given. But there is a question already given there. In the question applied to this question, is it is it true or false? So that statement which is given, what is yes, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, Miss Priya has written it's false. It refers to theory. Okay. Okay. Any other answers? We also yes, ma'am. We got options true also. Okay. If it is true, what is the reason? There's no reason written, ma'am. Reason. None of the terms A to D below can be applied to the question. So hypothesis, assumption, premise, or theory. Can any of these options be related to this question? What is being asked in the reference? That is the question, uh, the statement we have to write. Answer is true. Okay, absolutely correct. The participants who had written, answer is definitely true. Why is it true? Because all these things, hypothesis, assumption, premise, theory, it is not going with that question. It is just a statement. Okay, it is just a plain statement of the question that Ibrahim is trying to answer. So the answer will be true over here. Lots of critical thinking, analyzing, again, required. Okay, let's frame this type of questions uh, while practicing with our learners. Okay, very, very important. Okay, thank you for the answers. Moving on to the next uh, slide. In short question answers, also like how does education play? This is an easy question. Transformative role in Goli's life. Direct question, knowledge-based questions again. Okay, Kitty was a trusted friend to Annie. Uh, elaborate again, a direct question. Children can easily write it. How does Leslie Norris use vivid imagery and metaphorical language in a tiger in the zoo to effectively depict the confinement and oppression experienced by the captive tiger? Again, a competency-based question. Directly, they cannot write. First, they need to understand the theme, the message. Then only they can write about the metaphorical language used in that particular poem. For long question answers, here, here again, you see diary entry is there. They are writing it in the form of a diary. They are writing it in the form of a letter. They are writing it in the form of a story also at times. Long question answers are not, they are not asking only you have to write the answer. But in different, different formats also, you have to write the Long question answers, not only the answer. I know the story, I know the character, I know the message and theme. No, maybe they will ask you writing skill inside that question. Writing skill inculcated within the long question answer. So maybe they have to write a diary entry, a letter, a informal letter, okay, an article, anything they can, they have to write in inside the literature questions. So that type of question answer we have to practice, okay, in long question answer. Moving to communicative English 101 for class 9 and 10. The weightage is a little bit different over here. For reading skill, it is 20 writing skills. Now for communicative English, we have four sections, A, B, C, D. We, we have four sections, okay? 20, 24, 10, and 26 marks. This is the weightage for 80 marks paper. 
and these are the chapters which we need to cover. I have mentioned this because many teachers, again, they ask, they have a confusion over the lessons. What are the lessons they have in communicative English? These are the lessons for class nine, prose, poetry, and uh, drama. Please take a screenshot of it. For class 10, 22 for reading skill, 22 for writing, 10 for grammar, and 26 for literature. That is 80 marks. Competency-based questions definitely will be there. The competencies remain same as it is there in the language and literature, whatever we have discussed. Uh, same competencies we need to focus. But yes, for writing skill, email writing, description, formal letters, articles, we need to practice a lot for class 10th grade. Grammar, same topics almost, whatever is there in language literature. But most important thing over here is we here for communicative English, dear participants, Please look into reading section once because it has been written there. Please read this line. Text inspired from the themes in prescribed books and also from MCB for types of non-continuous texts. Okay. So please, the MCB, the, the main course book that you have, do practice all the themes, whatever is given there. It will be uh, given in the form of writing skill or from there, similar type of passages can be given in the reading skills as well. They have specifically mentioned it. Second passage, MCQs will be there. Very short question answers, short question answers definitely will be there. But again, from MCB, whatever themes we have, six, seven themes we have for class nine and 10 need to be discussed thoroughly in the classroom and practice also in the classroom. Okay, the MCB book that we have. We have workbook, we have the literature reader and the MCB. So please do practice all the theme. It's my request to all the dear participants. Okay, gap filling, editing, and reordering remains the same. There is no change over there. And yes, the questions will be based on the same competencies. Again, I'm repeating interpretation, inference, how they comprehend, analyze, refer, infer, these type of questions based on the situation or plot. Lots of extrapolation, reading beyond the textbook is required for writing competency-based answers. These are the lessons for communicative English class 10. We have six prose lessons, we have five poetries, and we have two dramas. Julius Caesar will take a lot of time. Please give full one month for this. Do not do that in a hurry. Let the children understand. Okay, and please give one month in your lesson plan. Keep one month in your lesson plan for Julius Caesar. It's very, very important. Okay, moving to the next slide. This is the weightage. Okay, for communicative English, class nine and 10, no difference as such. 30% weightage is given for knowledge-based and understanding-based questions. 35% for conceptual application means the whatever we discussed till now. And 35% for in evaluation, creativity, and analytical skills. Same competences for class 10. There is no change in that. Moving to the next uh, slide. The marks allotted. Okay, for marks allotted, as you can see on the screen, these are the marks which are given for different, different competences in the question paper in an 80 marks paper for class 9th and 10th, same. I'm going a bit fast, shortage of time. Sample question paper for communicative English. These are, this is a weightage 22, 22, 10 and 26. Paper code 101. Here also same type of questions. We will see it's very important and very uh, beautiful questions framed by CBSC over here. Just a second. See the second passage, how beautiful it has been given. The, read the following table displaying the details of five house captains. Now, if the child sees such type of passage, I don't know whether he will be happy or he will be scared or nervous. That where is the passage? I have not done such type of passages. So, see, this is a passage actually in the table format. And they have to analyze a lot. These are the names of the five house captains. I was going through it. I will, I took a lot of time, you know, I first I saw myself and checked myself with the marking scheme, whether I was getting the correct answers or not. So that I also be prepared for my learners. So five uh, house captains, they are, what is their motto? What is their participation in activities? All the participation is different. Very beautifully given by CBSC. Rohit, Rohit participates in debate and quiz, Sanya, social service and drama. Nobody is common over here, right? How to select the house captains. Achievements are also different. Awards, personal qualities. This type of passages it definitely should be, you know, practiced in the classroom. And this type of uh, based on this question, question number four, select the correct option to fill in the blanks and complete the analogy. Here you see paintbrush, Rajat with tabla. Now you have to find out who is with the paintbrush. And if we go into the table, quickly can someone tell me 
what will be the answer? Looking into the third column, participation in activities. Which house captain will go with that answer? Difficult again. Ananya. <laughs> yeah. Nowhere paintbrush is mentioned. You know, Anjali ma'am, nowhere in this, nowhere it is mentioned. So we need to see dance club and art club. The clue is over there. When we speak about art, it is definitely fine arts or visual arts, right? So visual arts means paintbrush and that is the answer. So for a below average or an average learner also, it will be difficult. The poor child will be searching for paintbrush, the word, and might not be getting it, right? So I feel like uh, this type of question is very interesting. It's interesting to do, but for the child, it is difficult in the exam hall. So please, let's practice. Let's gear up with such type of hand resources. Salam sir always helps us with different, different types of resources in the group. So we need to use all those. Uh, we have five. How many minutes are remaining, ma'am? You need to gear up, right? Ma'am, this question left yes. three, three minutes, ma'am. Okay. So this is the question paper pattern here also. Uh, the grammar part, if you see here, omission, omission and all, this also, uh, please do check that the pa parts which are shaded means there is no error. I have given such question this time in my school where the child was confused, you know, and trying to find the answer there as well. So CBC has given this type of question in the sample question paper where two lines are shaded. Very simple thing, but for a child, it is difficult in 10th grade. So they have written all the columns, okay? The shaded part, please tell them that, that there is no error in that. All right, so this also needs to be taken care of. Do as directed, usually they can do it. Competency-based question here. This question is very uh, interesting. Comment on L.C. Brown's writing style in the story, the shady plot, or comparison between Rhyme of Ancient Mariner and Mrs. Packletide's Tiger. This type of comparison and contrast questions. Frog and the Nightingale and the Deer Departed. Most of the questions are like that. So when we are teaching them, let's, let's practice in that way. Let's not focus only on one chapter and done. Okay. These are the writing skills topic. I have just mentioned it. Please take a quick screenshot so that it becomes easy for you to do it in the classroom. Class 11, class 12 for English code. These are the writing skill topics which we have to do for class 10 English language literature. This is for class 9. This, these are the writing skill topics for class 10. Most of the time confusion is there for communicative English. Please take a screenshot of this. This is for class 9. And these are the MCB topics which I was talking about. Please do discuss in the classroom for writing skill topics as well as reading skill and put it in the question paper as well, referring to the themes. And this is the circular from CBSC. That 50% weightage, weightage competency focus questions in the form of MCQs for class 9th and 10th. And for 11 and 12 also, you can see 40% weightage is given based on competency-based questions. Earlier it was 30, now it is 40. Earlier session it was 40, now this time it is 50. And these are the websites where you can go and check the marking scheme. We can solve it also and check our answers. And with this, we come to the end of the session. And yes, with hard work, definitely with self-belief, with learning together, we will be achieving success, I hope so. And thank you so much for being so patient uh, with me. Thank you so much. Over to Anjali, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Your words of wisdom have added on to the intellectual pursuits of our esteemed participants. However, we... Uh, would, we, would love, we would have loved to take some queries because we are falling short of time. So, you, can, you can take questions, ma'am. Now it is, okay. uh, I think, uh, we can continue. Uh, it is not cut off, no? Okay. You can so, continue. You can ask, uh, take questions, please. So, ma'am, there is a question. Um, some yes, participants are asking, which one is better, communicative English or English language and literature? <laughs> very tough question to answer uh, I cannot uh, say in that way I'm sorry that which one is better actually because both uh, I love both the papers okay 101 184 both are uh, and 301 definitely is important so we cannot compare you know between communicative English language and literature communicative English it is having its own essence 
okay there we are focusing more on the theme focusing more on uh, classroom discussions because the topics are less lessons are less in number so we need to have lots of interaction in the classroom we cannot complete the course in a hurry and english language and literature lots of again related to the experiential learning society relationships as well as obviously poetic devices are there in both so i cannot say which one is the best for me both are best uh, ma'am one question uh, how important yes, are analogy analogy based questions how important are they it is important for this year okay most of the questions uh, we see and it's it's definitely analogy based questions deducing questions a lot of weightage is there it's important for this year please do practice and resources let's share amongst each other in the beta groups okay which will help us because framing questions right anjali ma'am this time it is getting so difficult i mean we are yes. not getting any resources from anywhere this type of sample question paper that is given by cbsc we are not habituated in framing such questions right so we need to learn from each other uh, that how to frame it competency yes yes ma'am it will test the creativity of the teachers as well i think it is already testing <laughs> yes <laughs> ma'am uh, this one question regarding report writing what's the difference between uh, writing a report for a magazine and uh, writing a report for a report for a newspaper what's the difference is there any difference in the format of report writing for a magazine and a newspaper this question came up in the chat box okay newspaper report usually we write the date you know the day along with the title and the byline for magazine also you know it uh, when we write a report for magazine as well as newspaper but in magazine what is the topic that you are writing that is important is it based on an incident which you have witnessed then you have to give okay date and day but if it is a, it is a topic which is related to some event in the institution in an organization which you are a part of it right you have you are a part of it and then in that case it is not required but if you have witnessed any incident which you are not part of it but just witnessed and came and reported it to someone then definitely you have to write the date and day is important uh, ma'am uh, writing skill uh, writing skill based questions that are questions that are based on logical skills testing so will the format be considered in such a case yes yes ma'am writing skill any writing skill you write whatever writing skills we have we have marks for the format okay it doesn't matter whether it is for logical uh, reasoning or whether it is depending on some theme or so format is important marks there uh, marks are there miss hema sharma has raised her hand ma'am you may unmute yeah. and ask yes ma'am yeah namaskar everyone ma'am i had a query related to grade 11 and 12 in grade 12 uh, would we be expect would should we be expecting the uh, comparative questions uh, from 11 for grade 12 questions for 11 standard right hey ma'am for 11 standard you asking uh, uh ma'am uh, the syllabus of grade 11 chapters from grade 11 would they be included in a comparative uh, kind of question for grade 12 final board should we be using that for example uh, hima ma'am i'm uh, sorry your voice is breaking yes yes what i i what i understood from the question is uh, like you were asking for grade 11 from grade 11 any questions will be asked in grade 12 or not right comparative exactly something to do with third level and adventure to cite an instance no no from grade 11 whatever grade 11 lessons we have it is only restricted to grade 11 nothing will be asked from grade 11 chapters in grade 12 Okay. okay comparative okay, study will be there only between the lessons which are there in grade 11 12 is separate okay. totally separate no. okay all right because yes, there were a few instances where some papers had these kind of questions one more query ma'am if i have your permission yes yes sure uh, yeah this was uh, related to the writing skill now last time there were a few questions that had come up as in few sample question papers that had the diary entry and speech writing for literature so since now diary entry speech debate etc is not part of the grade 12 actual syllabus should we be mm -hmm. uh, making the children practice all those yes yes uh, 
very important and very good question okay hey ma'am ma <clears throat> in the sample Thank question paper yes very yeah. good question so see here lies the role of the student also somewhere right we have already okay. told everything guided them till class 11 most of the topics right. debate speech whatever you say art how to give a speech but they they then don't take it most of the time seriously but we are doing it till class yeah. 11 this is where you right. know cbc is again assessing whether the child okay. had done that in a proper way right in class 11 and whether okay. he remembers or not very important question as yeah. an educator as a guide we can definitely pra practice the format once okay thank the you ma'am thank you so much yes, yeah yes. it was something yes, that yes. was very thank bothering you. me thank you so much my pleasure thank you thank you uh, ma'am miss mansi has raised her hand miss mansi mm -hmm. you may please unmute and ask the question uh, greetings ma'am Actually, my query was regarding communicative English as you were saying that, you know, uh, this is the first time that we are going to experience uh, the board paper for English communicative, uh, perhaps for English language and literature, we had so much of the resource material. But uh, yes, looking yes. at the sample question paper, we could see that in the letter writing, they have not given us a clear, uh, you know, view of what the letter is going to be. Uh, like letter to editor is nowhere uh, close to it though we have like we have started that in the school but if we talk mm. about the letters that have been given they are you know just liking uh, like writing a letter to the librarian and a letter mm. to the governor uh, whereas in language and literature we were quite sure of uh, mm. inquiry letter you know order letter complain letter so we could yes. even understand and here yeah. in already, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, out of 40 marks, we have already got a decrease in uh, literature part where the children, you know, are able to fetch more marks. So how yes. can we make them practice writing section, basically letter writing? Because we are quite okay. unaware of what uh, particular theme is going to be there or what particular types of letter are going to be there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Coming to it. Uh, Ma'am, uh, whenever you get time, you know, you go through the syllabus of communicative skill once again, the syllabus curriculum, which is there in the website. Once you read the writing skill part, okay, this is one. Second one is like when it comes to letter writing, as you very rightly said, librarian, it, they have given librarian and one to the governor of your region, right? They yes. have only mentioned formal letter writing. But what yes. we all are doing is in the formal letter writing, letter to the editor or any formal letter, we are also doing in communicative English. Uh, let, placing order, complaint, inquiry. We are doing that as well without okay. taking any chances. So okay. uh, my suggestion will be to practice all the different types of letters. Okay, ma'am. Any resource material like we had for uh, CBSC question bank, we already had for language and literature. So we got, you yes. know, ample of, like children got ample of exposure. But if I talk about yes. communicative, we are yes. even lacking in the books also. So is there any suggestive book that you know we can do or something like that books uh, like you know various publications the book the publishers they are already publishing few books if you can uh, see the website just explore once just explore once and uh, mansi ma'am is asking the question right yeah, yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah mansi ma'am you can follow the btag group as well salams are always keep posting various materials and resources on that Talking yes. about the guidebooks, yes, a few publishers are already, I'm, I'm not going to take the names, but uh, few publishers are already putting it in the website and uh, just go through it once, once you explore. If you need, you can have my number from Salam, sir. We can talk personally also. I will tell you from where you can get it. Sure, ma'am. Thank, okay. thank you so much, Yes, ma Yes, ma'am. Resources are there. Now it is coming just this month, June month. Before that, okay. it was not there. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Yes. Um, sir, I think there are no further questions. Yes, ma'am. We can wind up. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Once again, it was indeed an insightful session. I learned many but things from you today. But I was running today. fast. <laughs> I was running fast. Still, you could cover many things, ma'am. Thank you so yes, much. Yeah. I would like to extend our gratitude and appreciation to ma'am Malika Sain for regaling us with boundless discourse. I'm sure we'll apply these students in our teaching modus operandi and ensure our young learners reap maximum benefit out of it.
Dear participants, kindly note the link for certificate and feedback form has been already posted in the meeting chat box. You are requested to fill up the form with all the necessary details. I, Anjali Nair, along with the CBSC Bharat Sahodia, would like to thank Ma'am Sain once again for her gracious presence and an enriching experience. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Abdul Salam for his magnanimous support and guidance to the teaching fraternity. Thank you, sir, for such a great opportunity. Also, a big thanks to the technical team and Arun Mohan, sir, for yet again a flawless execution of today's session. And most importantly, I would like to thank all the participants for their enthusiasm. I sincerely hope we earn the privilege of your time. Over to you, Salam, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, our participants uh, must have got enough, uh, you know, uh, information and uh, they must have got their doubts cleared. And uh, big uh, thanks to Malika, ma'am. Actually, you know, she was hurrying up. Uh, we can understand, ma'am, because the content was too much. Because you, you were covering from, you know, secondary and to senior secondary. And uh, you did your best, and uh, we are very grateful to you. You, uh, the, uh, we have, I think, we have given justification to, you know, all the participants for their expectations, and uh, marvelous job, I should say. The energy level, you know, uh, is amazing. Uh, that you, you know, sir. that kept the audience, uh, the participants, be with us. So thank you so much, Maliga, ma'am, once again, and uh, of course, Anjali, ma'am. Anjali, ma'am, your gracious, you know, performance was notable. And thank you so much for your time. And uh, we, you know, the, we, have, we have spent uh, almost two hours uh, for, you know, our from our valuable time. This is going to definitely help uh, uh, the teachers, I believe. Uh, there are, you know, people uh, wanting to ask questions whether, uh, I don't know whether we can permit. Uh, can we take two questions, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Aliya, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Jyoti, ma'am. Since a long time, she is waiting. Let's take question from Jyoti, ma'am. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, actually, I don't want to ask any question, but I want to put forward a request uh, to respected Salam, sir, for uh, just uh, arranging a session, if it is possible, on formats of all the writing skills because we hardly have any authentic uh, resource of formats of all the writing skills. So that is a request I wanted to put forward. And thank you for the enriching session, sir and ma'am. Thank you so much. We'll thank do you so we'll, much, Jyotina. Yes, we'll do it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, you know, Anjali, ma'am, um, Jyoti, ma'am, was very rightly, she was telling, Yes, there still we have doubts, you know, in letter writing, formal letter writing, whether to write the subject first, whether to write it after that, salutation, uh, confusions again. Notice writing, there are lots of confusions, whether the date should be written, how the date format should be there, title should be written or not. In the exam papers also we have seen this time, right, the evaluation. So different, different formats we are getting. So we need to sit once again with all the educators, with the writing skill formats. Children should not be confused. Jyoti ma'am, very rightly said. Yes. Reshma ma'am, quickly, we can take. Reshma ma'am, are you there? Okay, good evening. Uh, I just, no doubt actually. I just wanted to say, could you please send me the link for the uh, form once again in the chat box for the feedback form? Yes, ma'am, it has yeah. been shared. Thank you. It's but, there, ma'am. Uh, thank that you, ma'am. very quick. <laughs> yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Okay, and thank sir, you so thank much. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I know that you took a lot of time for, you know, uh, putting things uh, together, uh, for preparing to give such a, you know, wonderful uh, uh, rendering to the English community. And uh, thank you so much. I think we have to meet again uh, with another yes. topic. Thank you so much. Anjali, ma'am, thank you. Thank you for your you know, wonderful performance. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. All right, all uh, participants, thank you so much for joining. Uh, the link has been given.
please go through the link. Uh, there are, you know, so, so many times, uh, so many uh, people do uh, make mistake and they do not get their certificate. Uh, it is essential to go through the instructions there. Then only the department will process the certificate, even if you, you know, you complete the uh, complete and send the form. Uh, there are so many people, you know, on my WhatsApp, on calls and on email, they are coming back to us uh, that they don't receive. It is because of the mistake we make in filling the form. And uh, many a time, the, sometimes, you know, uh, due to security reasons, the uh, certificates may uh, fall in your spam mail. So keep checking your spam mail also. Due to security reasons, it happens. So that is, these are two things I, th I thought I should share with you. Uh, all, all together, let us work. And for the benefit of the student community, uh, let them you know, perform very well as we expect. So thank you so much. Keep working hard, keep connected, keep united. Thank you, Malika, ma'am. Anshali, ma'am, yes, Mr. Arun Mohan, everybody, good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good Bye, ma'am. Th Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.